We are back. Uh, we have a major call coming out of the vote. We'll try to get it up there, and it is Ohio. Donald Trump, the projected winner in the state of Ohio. 18 electoral votes, a hugely important piece of real estate where that comparison is concerned. 168, 109 in the race to 270. Here's where it looks like, uh, this is where it looks like as a uh, color filling in the red alongside Indiana to the west of Pennsylvania, down on through West Virginia, Kentucky, Tennessee, and so on. Ohio and Iowa had been the two traditional swing states that the Clinton campaign felt like were, uh, or the Trump campaign felt like were most within their grasp. Iowa and Ohio consistently have been polling in ways that have been favorable to Donald Trump. Obviously, Ohio is the archetypal uh, battleground, but I think everybody's been feeling like it was leaning toward him. Still, that's got to shake the Clinton confidence even more than these other close races do right now. I just, I do want to point out one thing about uh, North Carolina, which we are watching so intently right now. Again, North Carolina is one of these states that is too close to call, and it has been so for a very long time. Even right now, with 83 percent of the vote in, it is still too close to call Trump in the lead. But I, we were talking a little bit earlier on about the other two big ticket races in North Carolina. One of them, this Senate race, Richard Burr, incumbent Republican senator, trying to hold on to his seat against Deborah Ross, who ran a good campaign against him. Burr is now the projected winner of that seat. He will hold on to that seat. The other big ticket item in North Carolina is the governor's race. And it's been fascinating to watch these governor's numbers come in mm -hmm. out of this governor's race in North Carolina. Right now, again, with 84% of the vote up, it is too early to call. Too early to call in North Carolina, but you see these guys deadlocked 49 49. So if you're looking for sort of advice as to how North Carolina is going to go in the presidential, that Senate race may make you think that Donald Trump is going to pull it out. This governor's race uh, gives us no information because this is as close as they come. Yeah, historically, you have to win Ohio if you're a Republican. It's a necessary condition, but not a sufficient condition. Winning Ohio does put him at the edge now, possibly winning the election. However, I do think we're going to see a pattern which is traditional. Uh, the Republican, if you look at the country, it's basically divided 50-50. Uh, winning Ohio, then losing Pennsylvania makes sense tonight. We'll see if it does end up making sense. One Casey. thing I will say about this Ohio call is that this is something that the Clinton campaign was prepared for. So when they were setting out their map that said, okay, we have all these more paths than the Trump campaign, it included mm -hmm. losing Ohio and losing Iowa. Yeah. So I think from that perspective, uh, this, you know, th this news should be tempered just a little bit. I think the question is still their path. Don't forget, we have haven't even started talking about Colorado and there were some late questions in this race about Colorado and what the movements there uh, were going to be their path is Virginia Colorado and it, it's through the south all right uh, speaking of Colorado let's do some of these Senate races because the first one on our list we've been trying to fall back and catch up with these Senate races this evening is Michael Bennett uh, returning from Colorado, there will be um, Democratic in incumbent there. inevitable talk about Michael Bennett um, uh, joining leadership, I think, in, in the years to come, uh, a very popular figure. Uh, and, and more about Colorado as a state after this. Um, the uh, leader of the Democrats uh, projected, predicted, people guess, it's going to be led by Chuck Schumer of New York. Uh, who uh, had an easy time returning to the Senate. We're just going to go through these. Uh, Jerry Moran in Kansas. Uh, John Hoven, North Dakota. Getting these as you're seeing them. John Thune going back to the Senate from South Dakota. He had an interesting uh, history with uh, Donald Trump during this campaign. John Boozman, Arkansas, uh, Georgia. It's gonna be Johnny Isaacson in Iowa. The longtime KG Republican veteran Chuck Grassley going back. And uh, Mike Lee, the popular Republican, is going back from Utah. Here's the Senate again. Uh, Democrats with one net gain 
but this is early. Yeah, but the, the, the Senate races that are outstanding right now are a bunch of fascinating ones. In Missouri, I believe our characterization in Missouri with Roy Blunt trying to return to the Senate, the Republican, against a Democratic challenger named Jason Kander. I believe our characterization there is that is still too early to call. I that was too uh, early, yeah. In Missouri, we do have a presidential call that Missouri has gone to Donald Trump at the presidential level, but this Senate race right now is still too early to call. Um, also, in terms of too close to call Senate races, big names, Pat Toomey in Pennsylvania against Katie McGinty, the Democrat, that's too close to call. In New Hampshire, the Kelly Ayotte race against the Democratic governor, Maggie Hassan, that is too close to call. Um, and in Nevada, uh, we've got Joe Heck, the Democrat, excuse me, the Republican, up against Catherine Cortez Masto, who's the Democrat trying to take Harry Reid's seat there. We have also a, too close. excuse me, we have a major projection. In the state of Virginia, the Commonwealth of Virginia, the projected winner is Hillary Clinton. Hillary Casey Clinton's Hunt. campaign, breathing a sigh of relief there. <laughs> sure, sigh of relief. And, you know, we were talking earlier, and I have a source talking to me about, and, and forgive me for using a house race as an example here, uh, but News Barbara Comstock, you. she's a representative from Northern Virginia, mm. Fairfax yeah. area. I'm told her internal polling had her tied. And at the end of the day, she won, or she looks like she's on track to win wow. by almost 10 points with 90% of the vote in. Real. So we have been talking about what may have gone wrong here. And even if Hillary Clinton comes out on top here, it's very clear there was something uh, going on in this mm -hmm. polling. I think that's a pretty sharp example in an that's area that's that should have gone over. I was just well. checking that race you're talking about. It's Virginia 10, Virginia Barbara 10. Comstock, Comstock seen as a bellwether race. Mm -hmm. yes. If she is the projected winner in that race right now, it looks like the margin is eight points in her favor. Okay. Louie yeah. Bennett was the Democrat mm -hmm. there. Everybody yeah. thought that was going to be a squeaker. It's not. You know, the Washington words. Post endorsed Comstock. I think uh, you bear a bit of yeah, responsibility but, for this. Um, but, but it seems obvious from what's happening nationally. Why the newspaper endorsements yeah. are not the most yeah. powerful. That's a Pulitzer Prize winning columnist. Exactly. He doesn't speak for the great lady of Yeah, Washington, but, but newspaper endorse, you know, look at all the newspapers that endorse Donald Trump, right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah. like, but, you know, in terms of these None. bellwether races, we're still waiting for a result on Florida. Florida is obviously going to be huge. Mm -hmm. One of the Republican incumbents in the House who was thought to be endangered in this year of Donald Trump, who definitely distanced himself from Donald Trump, was Carlos Corbello the Republican Cuban-American representative in Florida, uh, in Florida District 26. Carlos Corbello has also won his seat tonight. He will also be returning to, the, to, to Congress. And so we're looking for these signs in terms of these too close to call races. Uh, and we're seeing a mix up a little bit. My two word nomination for what went wrong with prediction as to actual mm -hmm. is yard signs. No one counted the yard signs. Um, and I think if you see those matching glasses and mustaches, that means that's a pollster if you see them <laughs> out in public. Uh, Steve Kornacki with um, the route to 270, which really becomes...